What is up? My name is Chance with Custom Grains. You click this video because you don't know how to use your rotary or you're a complete beginner with rotary or anything. I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up your rotary in light burn, how to use it with your Thunder laser or any other laser. Me specifically, I'm using my Thunder Nova 35 uh, 80 watt along with the Rotoboss rotary. Stay tuned. The first step is to place the rotary device on your laser bed and get it parallel to the X gantry. First step is to place the rotary device on your thunder bed and lower your bed enough so that the nozzle does not hit the cup or the rotary device. The next step is to turn on your laser and some laser machines in the corner or in the side is where you unplug your Y gantry motor and plug in the rotary. On my previous laser, it was in the back corner where you had to unscrew the Y cable or the Y gantry and then plug in the rotary. Here on the Thunder Nova 35 and all of the Thunders, there's actually just a little port that you just simply plug it in and that will deactivate the Y stepper motors. So now that you got your rotary on and your laser on, you're gonna wanna move your um, gantry over to the cup and you're also gonna wanna level the cup. Rotoboss provided this level. It's actually quite nifty, so I'm a little bit off level. And I'll just put it in the most center of the cup. And you just turn the wheel down or up, depending on if you want to be level or not. Now the next step is to have your focus distance be perfect to the tumbler. So you're going to want to bring over the nozzle to the cup. And Thunder provided this little thing where this thickness of the acrylic is the perfect focal distance so you just place it under and then it looks like I'm gonna raise up my bed and just a little bit more all right perfect all right now off to the light burn step so with the thunder uh, laser uh, light burn already knows that the rotary is on. If you're using another laser, you're going to want to go up to your laser tools and you're going to want to do the rotary setup. Now each roller specifically has their own parameters. With the Rotoboss, the steps per rotation is 4400, the roller diameter is 56 millimeters, and then your object diameter, um, that is actually what your cup is. And I always measure it at the lip, where the lip touches the roller. So this is 88 millimeters. And if you're having issues trying to figure out what your steps per rotation is for the laser, what you're going to do is place like a pencil mark on here. Um, and then let's hypothetically say you put 5,000. If the pencil mark goes around the roller and goes past the starting point where your laser is, that means your steps per rotation is too high. Uh, vice versa, if your steps per rotation are too low, then the pencil mark would be, you know, before where the starting point is. And that is the trickiest part on um, figuring out or setting up your rotary is figuring out these two numbers. This is just simply your roller wheel, the roller wheel diameter right here, and you're always going to want to measure the wheel that is connected to the stepper motor. You don't want to measure these because these really don't do anything. And by don't do anything, they're not connected to the motor, so they, the wheels don't turn when that motor's on. <laughs> I mean, obviously they do something when you put your cup on it. <laughs> so now once you have all those parameters set, uh, you're going to hit OK. Sometimes you're going to want to click on Enable Rotary. With my Thunder, since I plugged in the rotary, it automatically turns on. Other laser manufacturers, you yeah, always have to enable the rotary first, even though you disengage the Y. Um, Y cable in the back corner. So now this is just me personally is I create a box and the box is technically imaginary line down here across and over. My image I always just put it in that box and the easiest way that I do it is click this little target icon so then the image is in the center of the box and then I just move the letter B up or down or wherever the client wants the laser etching on the cup. 
So the box is just like an imaginary layer line. I always have the output as off. And then this is the output for the image or the logo. I always find best parameters of 300 or 400 speed. And then the power is at like 12 and a half to 15%. Yellows and reds, I always have to increase the power just a little bit, just because it is a weird powder coating that the company uses. But for like blacks and whites, 12 and a half to 15% works just as well. So simply just place your tumbler into your rotary. Some, some rotaries don't have this little clasp. Um, you're gonna wanna slow down your rotary settings so when it moves, the wheels don't spin it so fast that the tumbler falls off. And to do that, so to change the parameters, if you are experiencing your tumbler falling off the rotary because it spins so fast, go into File, I'm sorry, go into Edit, click on Machine Settings, that will bring up this box after your laptop reads the controller. And the numbers that you wanna like have displayed, you're gonna wanna screenshot that or save it or write it down because these are the, the correct numbers that your manufacturer um, applied to the machine. So each manufacturer company has a little bit different parameters. These are the thunder parameters. Um, but after you screenshot this or write it down, you're gonna wanna change your idle acceleration speed to 20 instead of 3000. Your Y start speed, uh, that's at 10. And then the Y acceleration speed, you're gonna also wanna drop down to 20. Now that's only when the laser head moves to the starting point and then starts engraving. Now, if you ever do change these numbers, you're gonna wanna go ahead and revert these, you know, those new numbers back to the old numbers because that is what your machine manufacturer listed for good optimal output. If you don't do that, let's say you throw in a sign and you wanna laser engrave a sign, your speeds are gonna be really, really slow if you don't revert them back to the normal one. So now, what I always do, instead of wasting money on tumblers, use 3M tape. 3M tape creates basically a barrier between your tumbler paint and the laser. And it's just used for testing. To test it out, your speed wants to be really high and then your power, you wanna be really low so you don't laser engrave through the 3M tape. After you apply the 3M tape, just go ahead and insert your tumbler into the rotary. Bring your nozzle all the way over. Now, this is where my starting point of the laser is currently. And this is just my personal preference. So when I create the box, this is the technically exact outline or wherever that tumbler is. I have my job origin on the bottom left right now just for all my normal cutting, but when I do tumblers, I bring it over to the middle right. So that will bring technically the starting point of where my laser is right now. And when I start it up, the laser will move to the left a little bit and then the cup will slowly rotate and I'll show you. So this is the starting point of where the light burn is and the laser is. So the origin, middle, right. And the laser is going to go down a little bit and then the cup will rotate and get the letter B. Now this is only for thunder lasers from what I've experienced is that you cannot control the rotary device directly from Lightburn. You have to send the file to Lightburn, the controller, and then operate off the controller to frame it. With my previous laser, all you just have to do is technically hit start and that will send everything to that. So I'll go ahead and send the file to my thunder laser. Go over to the control board, hit file, and Blackberry. Sorry about that, my phone died. <laughs> so hit File, and then that'll be the first option that says Blackberry. Hit Enter. So that will import the file to the controller. Once your file is imported and your laser nozzle is where you want it to technically start, you hit Origin, and then to frame it out, make sure that the laser is going to hit the cup. I always hit Frame. So that moves the laser and the rotary, and there we go. And when you do test cuts on the tumbler with the 3M tape, 
you always want to lower your power to the bare minimum. My bare minimum is at 5%, and then I'll actually increase the speed all the way up to 500. And then I'll resend the file because the old file does not have it. Overwrite it. File. Enter. So now it has the new parameters of the speed and power. I turned on my laser head over on the right hand side. Everything's good to go and I'll hit start. Now the laser will start firing. So everything looked good on the test engraving. And the best thing about blue, M, uh, blue 3M tape, it doesn't go through. As long as your power is very minimum. So off to the real deal. So now that your tumbler is done laser engraving, it's time to wipe away the, the black etching or the paint. So in this bottle is a mixture of water and LA's Totally Awesome. It's just like a degreaser cleaner. And then a Scotch-Brite Magic Eraser or um, like an off-brand Magic Eraser. Squirt it on. And just start rubbing. And this, the paint will go away, like that black etching paint. And then you'll see the stainless steel behind it. Just clean it a little bit more. So this is the, the paint, I don't know, residue. And there you go. You just made yourself your first tumbler. If you have any questions, don't feel hesitant to ask them in the comment section below. Message me on Instagram or anywhere. Uh, but yeah, congrats. You made your first tumbler. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful day.